Iran against the USA. Let's pick out some key battles and have a score prediction and predict how this big game is going to go down. Again, to remind everyone, if you needed reminder, we've been reminding you for the last few days, equation for the US is extremely simple. Beat Iran and they're in the last 16 of the World Cup. Draw or lose against Iran and they're out of the World Cup. Doesn't get much easier. Even I can do that math, Andy. Uh, so looking at the key battles across the pitch, because we talked about who we'd like to see the US line up. Let's t look at kind of who has to stand tall uh, for them to advance in this World Cup, which would be a huge thing, by the way, for this young team if they can make it into the last 16. Key battle number one I've picked out here, Walker Zimmerman against Mehdi Taremi. I mean, Taremi has two goals and assists so far. He's a star at Porto, having a great season, scoring goals in the Champions League. And Walker Zimmerman, a bit of a scapegoat for US fans and gave that penalty away uh, against Wales to Gareth Bale. Was better against England for sure, but... This is going to be a gigantic battle, right? I think Tarimi um, maybe has the pace on him, but the power, the strength, very evenly matched battle here. Yeah, it is. And I, I wonder a little bit, given the need at some point to rotate, if this is not a game that I, I think Walker Zimmerman holds his place, but maybe we see Aaron Long alongside him because it's going to be... Um, you know, they're going to be defending in transition a lot more than they have the first couple of games. And I don't think that's a situation you want Tim Ream in. And so it really becomes, uh, you know, how much is Walker Zimmerman able to become that lead guy at center back in the distribution and the, the, the bringing the ball out and, and finding the midfield, the role that Tim Ream has performed? Because I do think, I think the, the consequences of not having Aaron Long on the field for this game are potentially greater than the benefit of having uh, Tim Ream on the field because of what Iran can do on the counter. And so just to be yeah. safe, I and I, I think Greg Berhalter does tend to be a little bit safer um, in big moments, especially as most managers do. Do we not? Yeah, I agree with that. And I think it's interesting when you look at Iran's game so far. Obviously, the England game was a bit weird, but they were great in transition there. But against the back four, seemed to struggle a little bit to create chances. But Wales played a back three, but they were kind of pushing forward a lot. I know late in the game they were going for the goal uh, when it was locked in nil-nil. But Taremi there, he just kind of likes to hug the left channel and then cut inside. So I'm looking at Dest and Zimmerman, if they do start on that side, he's going to cause them a lot of problems. And uh, he's been really, really good in this tournament so far. So Nick, your thoughts on that key battle uh, in this game? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Walker Zimmerman, I think, is largely underappreciated. I think he has been for some time. I think it, it even took Greg Berhalter a little while to come around in him. There have been times in the last two years where Zimmerman wasn't even called into the team, and for him to become a fixture, I think, says an awful lot about him. I do wonder what there must have been a design for this, I think. Uh, I made the remark to Andy before the show that I, I view Iran kind of as an MLS team, just solid Solid throughout, but a couple of designated players, if you will, in, in Taremi and uh, Jan Box and uh, as Moon, if he were to start. And I, there has to have been a plan for this game. I think Greg Berhalter is too practical to be changing his mind right now, I think. Um, so it could even be CCV here. It could even be Cameron yeah, yeah. Carter Vickers mm -hmm. sliding into the fold. Yeah, I like that. I was going to ask you about that because I feel like we're talking a lot about being on the transition and around, obviously. They only need a draw, right, to go into the last 16, mm -hmm. So, uh, in theory. So, I mean, they're going to be slightly more defensive, I think. Uh, just you don't quite know right now. <laughs> it's, um, it's so difficult to, to kind of predict these battles. But with those transitions, if the U.S. do have to go for it, which they will at some point, if it's, you know, if it's a draw, 30 minutes to go, or even, you know, in the first half of they're taking more chances, then you're going to want guys who are used to, Defending that way, and Carter Vickers might be better suited. So you yeah, might see him. A, uh, up, but... Sorry, Joe. You might see him plugged in late, or Carter Vickers, Vickers plugged in late if Reem does start, just because they're both so powerful on set pieces. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. Let's move on to the second key battle: Hadji Wright against Majid Hosseini. And uh, this is interesting. They've played against each other in Turkey a lot over the last few seasons. I was looking up the key battles. So, Andy, can we read anything into that? Because I seen was was really good um, against Wales, dominant defensively, likes to play out of the back and a very aggressive centre back. And and Hadji Wright, if he does start, I thought he did okay against England, did okay when he came on against Wales. 
gives that US a bit of a focal point up top and gets them up the pitch and allows Pulisic and McKenney yeah. and others to really join them in attack. So do you think he's going to start number one? And if you do, this is maybe a battle where they actually know each other pretty well, which is, is interesting to me. Yeah, I, I genuinely, honestly, I've spent so much time thinking about it. I have no clue what Berhalter is <laughs> going to do at center forward because the first two games have been such like drastic departures from one another, what he has done at the position. Yeah. So I don't think we've learned anything about either player that has started a game at center forward. I don't think we've really learned anything about the attack that that pertains to the center forward. And so it re, I, I, the decision comes down to nothing but how Greg Berhalter envisions this game going in his head. And that is that is going to be the sole determining factor because we've seen no production from either Josh Sargent or Haji right in that position. And that's not a huge critique uh, of those two players like it might sound. You have to understand what the center forwards in this squad are on the field for. They're not out there to score goals. They are out there to facilitate some possession, some hold up play, bring others into play. If they can get there and, and, and get a rebound scrap and put it home, sure, that's fine. They're both pretty good targets on set pieces. They do a lot of dirty work, those kind of things. That's what Berhalter's gotten from a center forge in the first two games. And it's made this team functional. I think obviously the bit difference them stepping up a level is if they have a goal scoring center forward, but not every team at this tournament even has one. That's true. And uh, speaking ahead of the game, Greg Bilharter was asked about, is he going to play a false nine, try and wedge Rayner and Aronson into a team, which Nick, I know you want to do. And we, we all kind of agree <laughs> with that. Um, yeah. But he said, no, I've got the guys, the Sergeant, Haji Wright, Jesus Fred. Maybe he's just, you know, trying to fool us all, uh, including Iran. But um, it seems like he's going to go with that target forward. And that's the way they've always kind of played for the most part. So it'd be quite a drastic to change that at this point. So maybe we do just see... Hazes Ferrer come in, but I would start Hadji right, and I think he gives the US a good focal point. Nick, let's focus on another big key battle. Christian Pulisic against Ramin Rezaian. He scored the late winner at the Iranian right back, was marauding, superb engine. Uh, against Wales, he was excellent, like I said, with that late goal. Dinked it in after a, a lung burst and run, which he did throughout the game um, against Wales. And I think for the US, Christian Pulisic, all his talent, all his ability... There are still question marks that maybe being a bit unbalanced down that flank when he does play. I'm not saying he doesn't work hard and he's played wing back at times for Chelsea over the last couple of seasons, but we just saw Anthony Robinson have to do a lot more defending against England and against Wales because Pulisic has given that license to advance. But if he has to, if he doesn't track back, I mean, Rezaian's shown that he can cause problems and kind of join the Iranian attack. So what do you think about that key battle? You know, I like it. I like it for Pulisic. I think this is a, a really great chance for him to shine. I was listening to a podcast that I that I check out almost every week, and it's from the English side of things. And they're big Three Lions fans, and they were surprised at how much work they saw Pulisic put in because of how little has been not expected of him, but what they see from him at Chelsea. And I think he's been grinding. I think he's been one of their best players. But what he's missing, although he has an assist, he's missing that moment. And I think against an adventuring fullback with a guy behind you in Robinson who has looked just spectacular. Um, I, I like this for Pulisic. It's one, and it's one of the reasons I want to see Gio Reyna in there as well, is I want to see more playmakers, more technical playmakers who can do special things when they're given a little bit of time. Because I think both uh, sides of Iran's um, attack can, can leave some areas in behind open for the U.S., Okay, then, boys, let's do it. Prediction time. This is the big one. Are the U.S. going to get the win that they need to go through to the last 16? Who's going to have their Landon Donovan moment uh, in this particular game against Iran? Andy, I want to come to you first, my friend. How are you feeling ahead of this one? And what's your prediction, most importantly? Uh, Nick just pushed me over the positive edge right there with the, the little tidbit on Pulisic. It, it sounds in theory on paper, that is the situation for Christian Pulisic to, to not just have a moment, but to get his feet under him at this tournament. And then who knows what can happen there. So I feel good about it. Two nil to the U S. Wow. Nick, do you share that positivity? I have to, it's in my blood. Yeah. I'm going two one to the U S and I'm even go as far as to tell you that the goals are coming from Pulisic and Walker Zimmerman. Ooh, I was going to go 2-1 as well. So I'm going to join you on that. And I think Pulisic, this is his moment to be the hero, the Landon Donovan moment. It's going to be him. Um, and I think that the US deserves it. They've been building good momentum. Unlucky yeah. against Wales not to win that game. 
and they're going to get the win they deserve. And it's going to be a, a wonderful moment for Greg Bellhalter and the team. Yeah, chills. And chills. then who knows what can happen in the knockout rounds. Anything can happen, guys. So head over to Pro Soccer Talk and NBCSports.com for all the latest news, reaction, how to watch information, preview ahead of this massive, massive game. The biggest game for the U.S. national team in at least eight years uh, as they take on Iran. And quite simply, all the U.S. have to do is win and they're in anything else and they're out. The stakes are high, gents, and uh, cannot wait for this. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.